Hello, everybody out there in fishery land. So today I want to talk to y'all about crayfish. No way. Yeah, so today we're talking about Cherax crayfish. Now that's a genus of crayfish usually found in Papua New Guinea, PNG as we call it. And uh, that is partially Indonesia and partially the island nation of uh, Papua New Guinea. And then there's also uh, the island of Borneo that has some as well. We have an interesting story to tell you today, which is about one that has been in the aquarium hobby for over 20 years now. In fact, 22 years as of a month from now is how long it has been in the hobby uh, that we know of for sure. And it has been harvested from the bird's head, as they call it, of uh, Papua New Guinea. The northern, uh, western section of Papua New Guinea in the whole country kind of is shaped like a turkey. Well, the head of the turkey in the far northwest is a peninsula, and it has a lot of incredible fish, things like the Bosmani rainbow fish, and some small lakes that are only seven or eight kilometers across, but that have some of the most well-known and defined beautiful uh, rainbow fish and other species as well that are in the aquarium hobby. However, this region is absolutely full of diversity in all of the different ecosystems uh, from underwater to up in the tree canopy to the underbrush and, you know, everywhere in between. There is black water, there is rapids and river hill stream type locations, there are lakes, and there are flooded forests. So just about any kind of environment you're looking for, you could probably run into it up there in the bird's head. So uh, where did they find this beautiful freshwater lobster then? Well, it turns out they found it in the Czech Republic. So scientists uh, were looking at some uh, some of these Cherax genus uh, crayfish that they had collected, and they thought, like, okay, we need to use some crayfish for a study we're doing. They thought they'd just get it from the aquarium hobby, and they bought some from a German importer, I believe it was, and then also a distributor that is in the Czech Republic. Well, it turns out that when they looked at it, someone with a keen eye realized on the research team that this is actually a slightly different uh, colored species or colored variety. And what makes this so difficult is that already in the hobby, there are a ton of different color variations of these freshwater uh, Cherax crayfish. Now, there are Procambrius, there's Cambrius, there's all sorts of different uh, crayfish out there in the hobby and in nature. There are tons in nature. And actually, one of the most famous photographers, the Shrimp King as he's known, but Chris Lukoff, is famous for photographing these. And I mean, there are literally thousands of species of different ten-legged uh, crayfish, crawfish, crawdads, whatever you want to call them, from all the way in the New World to the Old World to uh, the Pacific Islands and everywhere in between. And they're an ancient creature, but it has a ton of diversity. So they can have all sorts of different color morphs. And so then we have to go by things like their actual features, like how long their antennas are, how much armor overlaps with the armor, you know, pieces behind it, how big their claws are, you know, where the lines of color are, if they're always predictable. Um, and things like actually scanning them and finding out in a CT machine, like the structural size and volume of different parts of their body. All this is used to identify the species. But it turns out that these are so t tricky to identify. It, yes, someone had a keen eye and they thought, wow, that's a really different color uh, morph of that. But let me show you here. There are some insanely similar crayfish that already existed. So the Thunderbolt crayfish has been in the hobby since at least 2015. Also, there is the Snowden crayfish, and this new kind, which is known as the Dusky uh, crayfish, uh, kind of because of its smoky look, and it's got kind of yellow with a blue or green haze over it, and orange joints. Well, that's only one morph. There's also a bright purple, blue, and white morph that looks just like these other ones, and so it's gone by different uh, names like the in Enya and the Inbaum River and also 
different things like the moonbeam variety and the lunar crayfish you know there's all sorts of different names out there and every country seemingly has kind of had new twists on what the names are by whatever sells in their market so we've had like i said these species like the cherax snowden like the cherax um, pulcher that's absolutely beautiful electric colorful and now we have this new species uh right here and it was just described like i said and it's likely been in the hobby in captivity for a long time. And so the paper that came out doesn't necessarily even know what these uh, crayfish are like in the wild. It only has information from uh, the captured crayfish living in captivity. And, and we know that it's likely very similar to the other Cherex crayfish in the region. But it's likely at least threatened, if not uh, already endangered simply because it only occurs in a few freshwater locations and, you know, they, they eat pretty much anything they come across, which is great. They're kind of detrivores and scavengers, but they also will eat any live fish they can catch, you know, any insects, any uh, algae, you know, they are survivalists and they are able to be very flexible. So if you keep them as a pet, you know, there's all sorts of info out there. And actually, I want to do a, a quick mention of Aquatic Arts being someone who specifically I've worked with for now over eight years, and they have an absolutely phenomenal selection, the best in the United States, I would say, of these exact uh, genus of, of crayfish. They've got this one plus a, a few others, the Procambius, and you can see that some of them can be electric orange, yet be the same species as like the dusky crayfish or as the Snowden uh, Cherex, and even, you know, sources like Aquarium Glosser or the Wet Spot, you'll see that they label them as such, and it's really tough to do, and it turns out that the the thing that saved the day here and that is going to help us across the board is DNA. And it is the case that DNA shows that these in particular, this one species in particular, has a 2% difference from any of the other crayfish that they've already uh, sequenced the genome of. So that's a sizable uh, difference. I mean, that's that's actually quite a bit. A lot of species have less than, you know, 0.25% or half a percent. This is a full 2% different than any of the other crayfish, even in its, you know, immediate vicinity that look almost identical. And we don't know exactly why, but it, they have these electric colors, probably for something to do with, you know, spawning or, or attracting mates. But, I mean, they have these electric blue, purple orange colors that are definitely doing them no favors to keep them hidden and so they they get collected and at different points in their lives the juveniles have a more of a kind of spotted pattern and they kind of all look the same and they look more like the snowden ones that you see out species wise but as they get older they could be a number of different species and depending on the color collection point and the just the the phenotype or the genetics of how it expresses its colors just like guppies have different colors in the wild uh, it can look very, very different, yet be the same species. So again, the DNA at the end of the day is probably what's going to teach us a whole lot more. And it makes it like so clear why in this hobby we need to be uh, very observant. You may have a species that is a unique species that has not even been described for the last 20 years living in your aquarium. And that is absolutely wild, but that is the state of the hobby right now. So I just wanted to bring up this news. Uh, it was officially described in January, but now the genetic sequencing and another set of papers that kind of puts it in line with its other um, co-specifics in the region has been uh, published. And also, Chris Lukoff has a brand new book that is massive, and it is on all the incredible crayfish that he encountered around the world from West Virginia in America to, you know, Germany and, you know, Slovakia and Slovenia to, uh, the, and the Balkans all the way to China to, you know, Southeast Asia, Australia, Madagascar. That guy has been everywhere and there are crayfish, crawfish, crawdads, mud bugs, whatever you want to call them, living everywhere. And for the most part, you know, these Cherax, uh, they're a bit aggressive, they're a bit territorial, but you can keep them in the aquarium. And so if you're interested in these, 
uh, or in the book, you know, if you're interested in the book, I'll put a link below, but also if you're interested in getting one of these and actually keeping these, breeding these, it's easy to uh, spawn these in captivity, actually, and you just need fairly clean water, uh, you know, you need to be able to give them fresh veggies and maybe some uh, supplemental things like uh, spirulina algae or certain types of wafers for catfish or bottom feeders. And, you know, really that that's it. They, they're kind of like a crab or like shrimp scaled up, you know. They are uh, a pretty easygoing health-wise, you know, water chemistry. They just need, you know, anywhere between 2 and 10 kH usually so that they can replenish their shell. But for the most part, they're living in slightly acidic water that's very clean, uh, fairly oxygenated, and, you know, plants usually abound in the area, as well as uh, oxygenation and the water flow and churning uh, going on is substantial. So if you can replicate that in your aquarium, they'll be happy as can be. And uh, just make sure to keep fish that are relatively quick with them, uh, otherwise they can become a snack. These guys are like little ninjas and they will wait and then grab things. You know, I haven't kept this exact species, but I have kept and I've been around and observed a whole lot of different Cherex species. And like I said, Aquatic Arts for years has had the best selection, very healthy, and they breed them in America now, which is great because that makes it so much more sustainable and it's not, you know, going into the wild and collecting all over again all the time. So if you want to uh, get 15% off, I've got a discount code, FISHERY15, you can always use with aquaticarts.com and uh, if you're interested in these uh, these crayfish go help yourself and uh, you can also find all sorts of other plants tissue cultures and foods and botanicals and things for them on their website as well as terrestrial crabs and all sorts of other crazy beautiful incredible uh, little uh, crustaceans that exist in our hobby and in the uh, terrarium vivarium riparium hobby so that's what I've got for you today you guys and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week I'll see you guys next time on fish three bye bye